I recently made a video relating to this puzzle, and it was met with a fair amount of confusion. So in this follow-up video, I hope to explain a little bit about how to play this, how to solve it, and I'll show you a couple simple ways that you can make one of these so that you can try. Hopefully after you've watched this, you can go back and visit the previous video and maybe get a little bit more out of it. I hope you enjoy. There are plenty of rather complicated ways to go about explaining the Tower of Hanoi, and I'm not going to do that here. If you want to learn about recursion, click this. If not, then I suggest you start memorizing these, and you can come with me, and I will explain to you the simplest possible way that you can learn to solve this puzzle. The goal and the rules are both easy enough. Let's say that we want to get this tower to this peg. You can only move one piece at a time, and you can never have a large one on top of a small one. So let's start with the easiest case, which is one. We have an odd number, and here's the rule. Odd towards. Towards the goal, this being the goal, this being the start, odd number of pieces, odd towards. Now if we have two pieces, the rule is even away. An even number of pieces, this is the goal, this is the start, the first move is away from the goal, next case, 3, which is an odd number, so our opening move is towards the goal, the remaining 2, or even, we move away from the goal. Watch again, and this time, notice how every other move involves this little piece. The pattern should start to emerge for you. We add a fourth, it's even, we move away from our goal. The rule still applies. We have an odd number. We want to move here, so we move towards the goal. The more you start to think about the rule, the more you'll start to realize that it usually always applies. You might think that this is a situation where the rule doesn't apply, because it looks as though there's an odd number here, but this is really an even number because there's a break in the sequence between piece number two and piece number four. So this is actually an even number, and we will move away to accomplish what we want. To keep this video from becoming too tedious, I'll have to speed up the footage for five pieces. But Notice the pattern, odd towards. We have an even number remaining. I'm going to move away from my goal. Odd number remaining towards the goal. I hope this technique can really help you to make sense of this thing. Um, I think I'll let you try that one on your own. No, of course you don't have to make one that's as elaborate as the one that I've made. But there's a multitude of ways to make one of these, so you really have no excuse for not making one. And you don't have to use the three pegs. You can still play it.
just like this. This is an option for a homemade tower that I would highly recommend. In order to do this, you will need 11 ceramic disc magnets. I say 11 because a standard tower has 8 discs, and then you will need 3 magnets for the base. This version is very simple to construct and very satisfying to play with. Um, it's a lot of fun. If you want to make one, just drill out or carefully cut just enough for the disc magnet to submerge itself into the cardboard. And then use a little dab of hot glue to embed it in there permanently. The same thing on the underside. It helps if you use cardboard that has double layers like this one. And remove everything on the base so that you can make the magnet flush except for this top layer. And the glue will stiffen it up. I also used six strategically placed little dollops of glue and that helps to stabilize the base. Well, after considering this puzzle a little bit more, I hope now that you are ready to consider the relationship that it shares with this. So if you haven't seen the video with the Tesseract, please click, and I hope you enjoy.